So in this video we're going to have a look at uh, vertical motion using the SUVAT equations which we've found. So here's an example question. We've got a pebble which is projected vertically upwards from a cliff top, which they've called O, and which with a speed U, so we don't know what the speed is. The greatest height reached by the pebble is 50 metres above, okay, so that's the height above the cliff top, and the pebble hits the beach eight seconds after release. So make a note there that that's hitting the beach, obviously not hitting the cliff top again. We've got to find the initial speed that it's projected with, the value of u, the total time for which it's 40 metres or more above the cliff top, as well as the height of the cliff. So I'm going to start off with a little diagram. Here's my cliff. Um, it's going up with a speed u, and then it's going to go all the way up to the top, and then back down again. Okay. Now, within this journey, I know that at the very top there, v is equal to zero. I also know that my acceleration is going to be 9.8 going downwards. And I also know that at this point down here, t is equal to 8. OK, so I'm going to draw my SUVAT data table, think about what I know. So, I do know the greatest height reached by the pebble. I'm told that that distance there to the greatest height is 50 metres. And I'm also going to assume that my positive direction is going up. So up, I've got 50. U, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. I know that at the top here, V is equal to 0. I know that acceleration is minus 9.8 because gravity always pulls an object downwards, but I don't know anything about the time. So looking at all of that, I can see that I need to have a formula that's got S, U, V and A in it. And that formula is going to be this one here. So we'll start off by writing it out. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And then substitute in the values. So we're going to have v is 0. So 0 squared equals u squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times 50. And I can rearrange that. Take the 2 times 9.8 times 50 to the other side. So I've got 980 equals u squared. And then to find u, I've just got to square root it. So I've got 31.3 metres per second. OK, so then we are asked to find the total time for which the particle is 40 metres or more above the cliff top. So I'm just going to re-sketch my diagram here, as now I know that this is 31.3. It's still going to follow the same path. I've still got acceleration going down as 9.8. But this time, I'm looking for where does it cross the 40 metre line, because I want to know this time and this time, so then I can look at the total time spent between them, which is spent 40 metres or more above that cliff top. OK, so see that data table? So I'm looking for when the displacement is zero, and again, I'm going to take up as my positive direction. So 40, initial speed is 31.3, which we worked out. Velocity isn't going to be zero here because it's not at the top, so we don't know anything about that. I know acceleration is minus 9.8, and time is what I'm trying to find out. So S-U-A-T, that's going to be this formula here. So we've got S equals U-T plus a half A-T squared. So we're going to sub in our values, 40 equals 31.3t, and then plus a half times minus 9.8, that gives me minus 4.9t squared. This is a quadratic equation because it's got a t and a t squared in it. So first of all, I'm just going to rearrange that and put everything on one side. So 4.9t squared minus 31.3t plus 40 equals 0. Now that I've got that, this is my a value, this is my b and this is my C, so I can go straight into using the quadratic formula to find those two values. And in doing that, I find that T is 4.62 or 1.77. As it asks for the total time, we're going to look at the difference between these two times. So it's going to be total time, which I'm going to use capital T for, is 4.62 minus 1.77, which comes out to be 
five seconds. Okay, the final part was to find the height of the cliff. So again, we'll do a little sketch. Um, initial speed we worked out to be 31.3. It's going to take the path up and then all the way down. And down at the bottom here, we know that t is equal to 8. We've also got acceleration being 9.8 downwards. And once again, I'm going to choose positive to be upwards, just to be consistent. Okay. So... The displacement, which is the height of the cliff, so from here to here, that's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to put a question mark on that. Do remember that it's displacement, so it's not the total distance, it's just the distance from here to here, from where it started to where it finished. Okay, 31.3 is the initial speed. We don't know the velocity just before it hits the ground, but we do know acceleration is minus 9.8, and we're also told that the time when it hits the ground is 8 seconds, so t equals 8 formula with S, U, A and T is again going to be this one here. So S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. So S equals 31.3 times 8 minus a half times A. So again, we've got that 4.9 times 8 squared. That gives me a displacement of minus 63.2 metres which makes sense because if this is our positive, we know that the pebble's going down, so it's a negative displacement. So that tells me that the height of the cliff is that same displacement, but obviously positive because we're looking at a height. So 63.2 metres. Okay, a slightly different style this time then. Um, not very much information, but we're still expected to do quite a lot with it. So we've got a pebble which is projected upwards, so from ground level, with a speed of 12. And it's obviously going to go up to its maximum point and then come back down again. Up here, where the velocity at the top is zero. And we've got our same acceleration going down as before. So if we're asked to find the total distance travelled by the particle, it's important that we don't just go from here to here because the displacement, which is what the formulas calculate with S, will only tell us that the displacement is zero. But we want to know the distance. So we need to find the displacement to the top and then we could just times it by two because we know it's the same distance up and down. So we'll do a C back table for the journey up. And we're going to take up as positive for this. So displacement is what we're trying to figure out. We know that the initial velocity is 12, and we know that when it gets to the top, it's now got a speed of 0. Acceleration is minus 9.8. So S, U, V, and A, that's going to be this formula here. V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S. So what 0 squared equals 12 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times whatever S is. So rearranging, we've got 144 equals 19.6 S. And then to find S, we've just got to divide by 19.6. And that gives me 7.347 metres. I'm going to give it two four significant figures as it's sort of an in-between stage in my working. So then the total distance is going to be the displacement up doubled because it's obviously going to come back down again. And now I'm going to give this answer to three significant figures, which is 14.7 metres. So onto the time of flight. Then we're going to do a similar diagram, but this time we're thinking of the total time of flight. So from the ground, we're going up with a speed of 12, all the way up, all the way down, 9.8 going down, so if we do a CVAT table for the whole journey, then we know that obviously from the start to the finish, there's no displacement, it hasn't moved. So we've got displacement of zero. Started off with 12, and it's plus 12 if we choose up to be positive again. The final velocity we don't know anything about yet, but we do know that the acceleration is minus 9.8, and time is what we're trying to figure out. 
So with S, U, A and T, the only formula that's going to work is this one. So we've got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. 0 equals 12T minus 4.9T squared. And so actually this is a much nicer quadratic because we haven't got a constant term. So if I just rearrange this to that form, we can factorise out T. So we get 4.9T minus 12 equals 0. So naturally, one solution is that the time is 0. Obviously the displacement in no seconds is still going to be 0. And hopefully the other solution will give me the time to get back to 0 displacement again. So t is equal to 12 over 4.9. And that's going to be 2.45 seconds. OK, so the time of flight is from t equals 0, where it starts, to where it finishes. So 2.45 minus 0 is, of course, still 2.45. So there's our time of flight.